The new big blower for my dust collector is done and works and now I need a new filter box. Although I still have my old filter box, I won't use it again because these filters have seen better days. But I will still use this filter box concept with using these pretty high quality air cleaner filters. Although now that the blower is more powerful and just blows harder, I will use bigger ones of these. And also not just two, but four of them to get way more surface area. And it's also quite a difference between a new one and one that has been used for more than two years. And I don't think I'll throw these old ones away because they could be still good enough for a shop air cleaner. This is all the lumber I need for making the box for the new filters. The cut list is pretty simple. Two pieces of this length, ten pieces of this length, all milled down to these dimensions. The two frames that hold the filters go together like so. And to make the filter slide into there, I need to cut a few grooves in the pieces. And I already marked where they need to go. At first I make shallow passes to see if the groove is big enough. And once I got it adjusted right, I raised a bit more to cut the grooves in two passes. Got all the grooves cut, also already the ones for the plywood panels, so now it's time for some joinery. For the joints here at the corner, I will use box joints. This is a Screw Advanced box joint jig. Have a look in the video description if you want to know more about it. And perfect fit as always with this jig. Now I can also check if I made all the pieces to the right dimensions because the filter should fit in both slots and shouldn't interfere with anything. And it looks in pretty good. Alright, and now how to join this middle piece. I could use the method that I used on the filter box of my small dust collector. Here I screwed the middle piece from behind and later replaced the screws with dowels. It's a pretty simple method and makes for a fairly strong joint, but I'm not going to use it here because I got a new machine to play with. So I'll use my new pen roller to make a mortise and tenon joint. So let's test fit it. Perfect. Alright, the glue is dried, but the filters unfortunately don't quite fit yet. And I need to clean this corner here a little bit. And now it fits nicely. With it glued up, I could trim cut the frame to the final size. To make a box out of this, I need to join the two frames with these four pieces. And I'll again cut mortise and tenon joints for these. This was probably the last time you saw me using this machine without the dust collection net. The joints themselves fit perfect, but I couldn't get the alignment quite right. But as this was the first time using the pant router for a project, I kind of expected that to happen and, well, now I just have to tweak the tenons a little bit with the file and then I'm good to go. Also not forgetting to glue in the plywood panels.
This upper part here didn't came out quite square during the glue up and I had to put a clamp diagonally to bring it into square. And I made sure that this corner is square and this corner is square and if these two are square then these two should be square as well. But as you can clearly see they are anything but square. That's just unlogical, that can't be. So then I measured the distances in here and here I got 25 and a half and here I got 25.8 and that's the problem. And it's even worse if you notice that during the glue up when you already put clamps on and the glue has set for about five minutes. Uh, yeah, so I made sure that I had two corners square and let it just dry like that. That's long dry by now. Well, shit happens. Let's fix it. So I'll just cut through this joint here again and the saw curve is 3.2 millimeters, which is about the amount that this piece is too long. Now I'll just put in some glue again. Of course, the tenon is now gone and it's just a butt joint now. But that's actually more than strong enough for this because in the end there will be plywood on top of here screwed to the frame that will strengthen it plenty. So a butt joint here is all I need. Okay, so now the frame structure is finished and square. Next it needs a top to be able to attach it to the blower housing and an access door for the filters. And therefore I need some plywood. Yes, this plywood. And this is no video fake, this is all real here. Or is it? Uh. Now marking the inner perimeter to locate screw hole positions. And this now gets mounted here, but that's easier to do if the blower housing is on the workbench. I want the airstream of the blower to enter the filter box in the center, and therefore I shouldn't mount it in the center here, because the majority of the air will exit the blower in this area because of the curvature of the transition. So I'm going to mount it a little bit offset like so. And now with this mounted, I can mark the inner perimeter to give me the position for the hole that I need to cut out. Well, small plan changes here because this plate not only gets screwed through the transition, but also gets glued in the end when I seal everything with silicone. But if I do that, then there's no way I can reach these two screws to secure the filter box. Also with this big plate mounted to the already very big blower housing, it gets even more awkward to mount it up there in the corner. So to fix that I made a smaller plate and this one will get glued to the transition. And when the blow housing is mounted to the wall again then I can just take the whole filter box and screw it to the smaller plate and this then won't require a seal. And I also glued a few pieces here in place to make the alignment much simpler. Now before I put it back on the wall it was suggested that I maybe should replace this protective screw in here with something stronger. And the day after I installed it, I happened to be in the hardware store and found something very suitable to replace it with. Well, this is a lot stronger. Now the box is a little crooked, but because of the way I mounted the blower, I can adjust that. Alright, next making the door for it. I want this door to be able to swing open like so on hinges and therefore I've got these tiny little hinges that I think I removed from a toolbox. I'll shim it with a few layers of paper to make room for the weather stripping sealing material. When it's closed there needs to be something that supports the middle piece. On my small glass collector I installed a pin here and drilled a hole in the door and they fit into each other when it's closed and then this pin supports the middle piece. Here I've already drilled the hole and to locate the other hole position I use one of these dowel center finders.
With a dowel shape like this it fits much better into the hole and I just mark how far it will stick in. And this mark now tells me how far I need to glue it into the hole. And now everything gets aligned. I sized the filter box so that the filters stick out here a little bit. And to make the door shut again and also overlap the filters, I now need to cut some grooves in the door. That was the same procedure as before. Now I've also got all four filters so I can test fit the door. There you can see it again how it works at a better view. I've also made two large cutouts in the door to install some plexiglass as windows. I'll install this glass later when I also seal the rest of the box. To close the door I installed three of these latches here. They're still a little loose, but that's because I haven't installed this weather stripping sealing tape yet. But what I can already do is breathe some really clean air. <sighs> installed back on the blower, you can see that it hangs crooked again because the plywood door and the filters actually added quite a bit of weight and this time I can't adjust it because right now all the mess just hangs from these two supports and the ones in the back are loose, you can see a gap there. So I really needed a better way to support this heavy filter box and therefore I made a big angle bracket and a pad with foam on it to reduce vibration when it sits on it. bracket is in place, I can remove the support and it stays up there. With this the filter box now has its own support, everything is still free to move and I could take the load off of the front bolts so the ones at the back are now also doing work again like they're supposed to. Alright and that's pretty much it. What's left to do is to take everything down again and paint and varnish it. Now while paint and varnish are drying there's one more thing I want to do. I want to add a secondary filter like for the ones I made for the small dust collector. What I did here is I pretty much made my own pleated filter and a wire screen holds it in place and the filter material is just flat cooker hood filter. To make this work for the bigger filters I also need to make bigger screens. As I'm soldering this I roughen the end a little bit to remove the coating from the wire there. Okay, now to solder these pieces into a frame, I made myself this template here with the CNC. It just has grooves in it which provide a consistent spacing. <sighs> One done, three to go. Okay, with these screens done, I now need to make the filter mats for them. And definitely need to sew two cookout filters together to get a long one. And this time, my mom took care of that. Now I've marked all the positions where I need to fold it. And then I use my straight edge to make the folds. And clamping it a little to bring it more into shape. Now I can spread it out on the filter and the wire frame will maintain the spacing and keep it in shape. And with all the paint and varnish dry I can now seal everything with silicone. And I almost forgot to include this piece here which makes this edge here now non-parallel to the impeller which should help with noise performance. With my finger dipped in soapy water the silicone doesn't stick to it and I can easily spread it around nice and even. And I'm also gluing in the plexiglass 
I left a gap all around the glass and here the silicone will hold it in place and seal it at the same time. Okay, painting and varnishing is done, sealing is done, the filters are done, so time for the final installation. When I now close the door, these grooves will then also hook over the wire screens of the secondary filters and then they will be held securely in place. Alright then, it seems like I built the world's biggest, most overpowered shop air cleaner. Here I'm touching different parts to feel the vibrations. There definitely are some, but not at the walls, which is good, so I won't disturb the rest of the house with them. And now to make it into a dust collector again, I just need to install the cyclone. And of course the dust collection bin. And with the piping hook back up, it's all done and I finally have my dust collection back. Man, this was quite a tough time without it. Behind the bandsaw, for example, is a spot where dust has accumulated. Time to get rid of it. With the new big blower, I got quite a bit more suction, as you can see. Also, smaller pieces are no problem. This performance now is also so much better than before. It's super comfortable with the machine running without any kind of ear protection. Very happy with that. The only odd thing with this now is the cyclone. It looks a little small for this big blower. Hmm, I might have to rebuild that. But therefore I... yeah. I want the airstream of the blower to enter the filter box in the center, but therefore I won't mount it centered on the outtake. Oh, 